the S in Internet of Things or IoT stands for security. <laughs> Funny story time. Logitech, the Logitech Harmony. You guys hear the Harmony? It's like a home media server box hub thing. A lot of people bought the Harmony, really like it. Uh, first gen Harmony owners, sorry, sorry about your luck, it doesn't work anymore. So I think that if you've ever bought an Internet of Things thing, uh, if it hasn't already happened, it will happen. One day it's just going to stop working. Uh, you know, when the company's business model changes or, or goes out of business or is acquired by somebody else, uh, those devices are just going to stop working. If you like the promise of the stuff that Internet of Things brings you, but you sort of want to DIY it, maybe you're a tinkerer, well, you should take a look at the Asus Tinker Board. Uh, I'm sure that you've, you've probably heard of the Raspberry Pi, you know, a single board computer. It's not real big, it's, you know, something that you could use. The, the Tinker Board is Asus's version of that, but it's a little different under the hood. It's a lot more horsepower. So if you've hit a wall with the Raspberry Pi, or maybe you've already been experimenting with the Internet of Things, uh, the Tinker Board is a nice trade-up in a lot of ways. The software ecosystem and the user ecosystem is a little different. Tinkerboard's actually been out for about a year or so, and I was sort of curious to see how the user following would, would develop. And over the last year, it has developed a solid user following because the hardware is so solid. Now for a single board computer that will run from a three amp USB power supply, it is surprisingly powerful and capable. It's a quad core 1.8 gigahertz. It has two gigabytes of dual channel uh, DDR3 memory. It has built-in 802.11 BGN Bluetooth 4.0 and Gigabit LAN. And yes, in testing, I was able to get the Gigabit LAN interface up to you know the full 100 megabytes per second. It's a little bit limited by the uh, micro SD uh, slot read. I was able to do that speed from a RAM disk, but uh, you know with a with an appropriate SD card, you probably could get there. It has four USB ports. It has one analog three and a half millimeter audio jack. One HDMI port, it's full size, that supports 4K, that's HDMI 1.4, 4K 30 hertz. Uh, and it has the 140 pin header that's basically the same pinout as a Raspberry Pi. So you can use a lot of Raspberry Pi devices. Me, I used the touch LCD and the camera, and I was able to get both of the devices working. Now the camera was a lot more grumpy than the LCD, and pretty much every configuration with the LCD uh, it worked out of the box. That's with uh, the Tinker OS, which is sort of an official image from Asus, and also Asus's Android OS. Yes, you can just run straight up Android on this if you want. If you're a developer, you're developing Android apps, you want a zippy little machine to help you test Android apps, well, it's a pretty good candidate for that. Uh, it also has hardware decode for H.264 and H.265. Now for the camera problems, um, you know, basically out of the box, there was no configuration that really supported the Raspberry Pi camera well. Uh, I've been using it on and off for about two months, give or take, with lots of different software images. I was able to get it to work compiling my own kernel, but if compiling your own kernel is not something that you want to do because it is kind of an involved process, you can compile it on device, which takes a while, or you can do a cross compilation on another machine, and if those are not things that sound like fun things that you could do, uh, you might you might wait a little bit. There are also a number of specialty Linux distributions that have popped up to provide different support. Uh, there is a full version of Chrome OS. It's not called Chrome OS because because Google, uh, but you can do Chrome OS type things with this single board computer. So if you're into Chrome OS and you want to run that, you can. Uh, Armbian is supported. It works really well. And also Volumino. I'll, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a specialty Linux distribution for audio files. You can use it with a USB DAC. The kernel is tuned for real-time operation and really good uh, audio playback parameters. Um, given to understand that this distribution is kind of mind-blowing on this piece of hardware because this hardware has a lot of horsepower and the plugins that are available for Volumino that take advantage of, of more CPU horsepower, you can do some really exciting and interesting things sending the audio output through you know your USB 2.0 audio DAC, your high-end audio DAC, basically. Gigabit interface and Wi-Fi make it a, a really, really interesting product in that regard as well. So you can even replace the wireless antenna with a beefier external wireless antenna. It's got a standard micro connector. 
uh, there's a lot of options in terms of software support. Whereas, you know, at the beginning of 2017, it's you had Tinker OS and a little bit of of uh, a, a little bit of, of Debian or Armbian. Uh, Tinker OS is based on Debian, but you know how things go with the customized distributions and, and that sort of thing. Also, Yocto is available. So Yocto has a lot of uh, scientific modules and things for like uh, OpenCV, image recognition and things like that. Of course, Debian has that as well, but some people prefer to work on Yocto. Yocto is what Intel adopted for their Internet of Things platform and their you know, Intel Edison and things like that. So there are some good resources out there for Yocto. You can apply them here and it works pretty well. For uh, Tinker OS version 2.0.4, which is the very last version that I used, it came out about uh, really just a couple of weeks ago at the time I'm doing this video. Um, it, it works a lot better um, than, the, 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 than the previous versions, a lot better support for, for more accessories and a lot better support for the hardware, a lot of performance improvements. So the GPU on this, uh, you know, as a Mali GPU, and it works pretty well, all things considered. They also enabled uh, true, for true-ish 4K support. It used to be like 1080p upscaling, uh, but you can actually run, um, you know, 4K um, through with, uh, with the more recent software updates on the on the Linux side of things. Although I would really recommend 1080p for the desktop resolution, but you can do 4K H.265 or H.264 hardware playback. That works fine. Now know what you're thinking, what drew me to this board? You know, what advantage does it have? You know, is this something that I should pick up? Well, if you've already messed around with uh, embedded systems like a Raspberry Pi, and you like tinkering with electronics, you know, it's really hard to go wrong with this board. The software support is getting there. It's still not quite as good as the uh, Raspberry Pi support community, but the hardware is substantially more powerful. So if you've hit a wall with your application, with whatever it is that you're doing with the Raspberry Pi, this would definitely be worth a look. Things like image recognition and uh, OpenCV are much, much better here because you've got the increased RAM, the increased memory bandwidth, increased computational horsepower. I mean, quad core, 1.8 gigahertz. It's a really powerful platform. You will have to jump through a few more hoops just because of the software side of things. Things are a little bit more uh, homogenized, I think, on, on competing platforms. Uh, but with this, you know, the horsepower sort of wins all. The gigabit interface is also nothing to sneeze at. I mean, it's it's full gig and you can get the full performance. It's a real tech codec, basically. So that works really, really well, uh, you, you know, uh, for the different kinds of applications and stuff that you might be running. This would be a great system to learn, you know, system administration. You could run a web server on it, a development server, you know, full MySQL. You've got enough memory there to do that with two gigs of memory. Um, so, I, you know, this is a really powerful little system. It is a little bit more expensive than a Raspberry Pi. So if it's like your first system, I might hesitate a little bit at recommending this as your very first embedded system. But if you need something with a little more horsepower, or you're going to be doing something with video, or you're going to build a higher end media center, even the emulation, the emulation stuff will chew up the CPU like crazy. It's it's better suited for those kinds of things that need more CPU horsepower, just because it's a, you know it's a faster version uh, with more cores. So if you if you buy one of these and you do an interesting project, you should share with us on the level one forums. I'm working on a project right now. Don't want to talk too much about it, but I'm using Dallas one wire temperature sensors, uh, AC 110 volt control, and uh, PWM and DC fan control. So. It's like a, it's almost like a fan hub on steroids, I'll tell you that. But it automatically gathers and logs and graphs information, and there's a touch screen for running different kinds of tests. So it's shaping up really, really well. I can't imagine doing it uh, with anything that has less horsepower than this, because this is, <laughs> I'm using all of the uh, computational capabilities of this platform. So hopefully I'll have some time to work on that the next few months and can do a video on that, maybe. See how that shapes up, I don't know be a lot of fun. Look for that on the level one forums. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.